Hi, today we're going to start looking at making animations in Scratch and using multiple sprites. First, let's think about animation a little bit. Let's say I wanted the cat to come from the left side of the screen to towards the middle. You probably have a good idea of how you could do that. One possibility would just be to move sort of a big step like 70. When I make that go, the cat comes towards the center of the screen. I can make the step even bigger, try to get to the middle all at once, 150. And when I click it, it jumps towards the middle of the screen. But it doesn't really seem like it's walking out towards the middle. It just sort of jumps from one spot to the next. So it seems like we need to have small steps done over and over again. For that, we should use something like the repeat block that we learned about before. So I'm going to go to Control, drag out a repeat 10, go back to Motion, and pull out this Move 10 steps. I'm going to move the cat over, and when I click Go, he kind of slides out towards the middle of the screen. I should probably go a little further make it go 15 times instead of 10 so it goes more towards the middle. So that's a little bit nicer but there's still no sense of really walking. The cat just, just slides like on ice. So let's look at the idea of animating the cat a little bit. Some sprites have what are called additional costumes. Here you can see the cat like we're used to seeing the cat and here's another picture of the cat with the legs bent. Together, they can kind of make a little bit of a walking motion if you show one and then show the other and then show the first one and then show the, the second one. Under looks, there's a bunch of commands we haven't looked at yet, but one of them is switch costume to costume one or costume two, and another one is just move to the next costume. If I click this next costume, it goes from costume one to costume two. I click it again, it goes back to costume one again. So if I click that kind of fast, it gives a little bit of a walking motion to the cat. I want to use this inside our repeat block so that the cat moves a little bit, changes its costume, moves a little bit, changes the costume, moves a little bit, changes the costume, and so on. So I'm going to add this inside the repeat loop so now the steps that are repeated are move 10 steps, change costume, move 10 steps, change costume. And it'll do that over and over again 15 times. Let's see what that looks like. All right, well, that's pretty nice. Except the cat's maybe a little bit excited walking, getting a little fast there. So we're going to control. I'm going to use a weight block to slow things down a bit. I'm also going to add that inside the repeat loop so that it moves, changes costume, and waits before it moves again. One second is really pretty long, so I might go a little bit slower, like to a half second, 0 0.5 seconds. Now when I click on the repeat, the cat kind of marches out across the stage in a little more pleasing fashion. It's probably a little slow, but it's good to understand what's going on there. We just use the two costumes that were available for the Scratch Cat. If you wanted to, you could start adding more costumes or draw your own. Of course, it's pretty hard to make them look quite as nice as the ones that are already built in. But at some point in the future, we'll try drawing our own. Script tab, so we can see the little program we've written. And we'd like to add another character to this scene. So, so far we just have the cat. Down here in the sprites area, there's an option to add a new sprite. You can choose a sprite from a library of existing sprites. You can draw your own. You could load a picture and use that as a sprite, or even take a picture from a camera. Let's look at the library first. So there's a lot of stuff in here. I can scroll down and look at all the different sprites that are available. You can also start to look at them by theme. So for example, you can look at animals, fantasy, which has a lot of like you know unicorns and witches and wizards and stuff like that people, things, and 
transportation with various vehicles. I'm going to look at fantasy and I'm just going to choose the dragon to add to our, our uh, project. So I'm going to click on dragon and hit OK. So we have the dragon here. Notice the program that we had before, the repeat, move, change costume, wait, is gone. But don't worry, each sprite has its own script area. So right now this shows that we're working on the dragon sprite. If I clicked on the cat, we see our program come back again. So sometimes you get a little worried like you've lost your program, but it's only that you're probably on a different sprite or something like that. Now, I want the dragon to come in from the other side towards the middle. But he's facing the wrong way, so that's a little bit of a problem. I can go to looks, I mean motion, I'm sorry, and tell him to point in direction left. So I want him to face towards the left, and when I click that, it does face towards the left, but it's upside down. You may or may not want that. I can fix that by clicking here on the little eye on the sprite. And there are these funny things called rotation style. This one means it can go upside down and left and right. This one means it can only face left and right and not go upside down. And this one means no matter how you point it, it's always facing forward. So I'm going to choose that middle option so that it only faces left and right and doesn't go upside down. Then I'm going to click back on this arrow to make it go back to the normal, normal view. Well, I would like to take our program for the cat and do something similar for the dragon. And actually, we should look at its costumes and see what it has. Oh, it's actually got sort of a little bit of a flap and also some fire breathing, so that would be kind of fun. So while the cat came in this way, I want the dragon to come in this way. I can repeat what I did before. I'm going to do something a little bit easier. I'm going to take this set of instructions and drag it on top of the dragon. It doesn't look like anything happened, but when I click on the dragon, that, those instructions were copied and are now the script for the dragon as well. If I click on this, it starts going across the screen. Notice this time it moves this way from right to left, and that's because that's the direction it's facing. When you tell it to move 10 steps, it moves in the direction that it's facing. Now one problem is, is that I would like both of them to come out at the same time. But the only way I can run a script is to click on it. So it's a little uncomfortable to have to like try to click on this and then find the dragon and click on the dragon to make both go. You can imagine if I had 10 or 15 sprites, that would be not a very workable way to do something. So we need a different way of firing off these scripts. We want them to start at the same time. Normally, when you run a program, you, you basically give a command that says uh, go, and you want everything in the program to start going. Under events, there is this block that says when green flag is clicked. We can see a green flag over here. I can attach that on top of sets of blocks. And I'm going to do that for both the cat and the dragon. And now if I click the green flag that tells all these blocks to start, start running. So the computer starts looking at those commands. So I hit the green flag and notice both of these start going. They also get a little bit of a yellowish highlight showing that they're active right now. So I can click on the cat and it was highlighted for a moment too until it finished. So that's a nice way to make two things happen at the same time. You attach them to when the green flag is clicked, which again that's found under events. And I drag that out and I attached it to this, the blocks that I want to have happen, that I want to start when the green flag is clicked. Notice there's no way to attach anything on top of the, that green flag block. And that's because we, don't, we can't end with that. That starts a chunk of, of, uh, of instructions. I'm going to show you one more thing. And that's the, the, right now the stage is kind of boring. It's all white. There's nothing interesting to look at there. If 
we click on the stage, the stage is a special kind of sprite, essentially. And I can say new backdrop. Choose backdrop from library. Again, I can take pictures or paint it, but I'm going to choose a backdrop from the library. And I can pick some kind of scene like the brick wall too. Hit OK. And now they have this more interesting background they're on. I'm in the costume area. I need to go back to scripts. I hit the green flag. They fly out. I've made a little animation. So what I'd like you to do for this next scratch assignment is to play around with a couple of sprites. Don't go overboard, you know, just two or three is plenty to play with. Make them fly around in some interesting pattern. Walk around, use a repeat block, some move, add in some turns if you want. Use the next costume, if they have costumes, to make them animate and make them wait to get the pace right. And it doesn't have to do anything that interesting, but just have them, you know, do something that amuses you. Have them pop up and jump around, or just just something sort of interesting. And just practice loading different sprites into your project, and looking at their costumes, and figuring out how to uh, move them where you want them to go. So you can get pretty complicated with this if you want, you know, doing all sorts of complicated paths, move, turn, go up, turn and so on. And so try to make something kind of interesting, but it doesn't have to be uh, that complicated. I just want you to practice a little bit. So have fun with that, and then we'll start doing a little more complicated stuff next time.